live from New York, it's Ask a Couple Engineers. Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to a warm summer night. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. That means it's time for Ask an Engineers. We got double the engineers today. As always, it's me, Lady Ada. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. We're broadcasting live from the Ada Food Factory. We do all the design, testing, shipping, manufacturing, coding, and support of the electronic goodies that you know and you love. And with us, we have special guest today, Pete Warden of uh, TensorFlow uh, fame, works at Google, does machine learning, knows all about how to speak the magical language of machines. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have... Are you the machine whisperer? <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that if, the... if they listen to me, yeah. I would be. <laughs> well, the problem with whispers. You have to speak up yeah. a little yeah. bit. Uh, we've got an exciting show for you tonight filled with machine learning goodies. Uh, the code is not AdaBoost, but I was thinking about it. It's going to be TeenyML. <laughs> Yeah, Let's go gonna... and uh, tell them what's on tonight's show, on Mr. Lady Ada. show, the code is TinyML. Tiny. 10% Tiny. off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Use that for everything except for gift certificates, Adabox, and Code Academy courses. Lady Ada will talk about show and tell and all the people who showed and shared the project. So it's a full house tonight. Yes. Then we are going to talk to Pete about TensorFlow machine learning and a bunch of other things. Um, if you have questions about TensorFlow, about machine learning, about how you can get this stuff to run on microcontrollers and more, put them up in Discord, and we're going to be talking to Pete throughout the show, and uh, then at the end as well. We got a little bit of a preview for JP Show Make Code Minute that's going to be coming up this week. We have some Python on hardware news. We have some 3D printing. We have some made in New York City factory footage. We're going to do new products. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to do that on Discord, where we're pleased to announce we have 13,000 people. Luckily, 13,000. And uh, also, uh, it, our Discord community is getting so big that we're covering lots of different topics. We now have a machine learning uh, oh, awesome. topic. Yeah, people are in yeah. there talking about And they're about talking about machine learning. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do top secret. It's busy. Uh, this top secret is going to be neat because we're going to uh, see if Lady Ada and Pete can do to talk about features of a product together that's not even out yet. So we'll see how that goes. It's future top secret. And then we're going to give away something at the end of the show, all that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Okay, so let's um, let's start with the, the normal stuff to pay bills and get through show and tell, and then we're going to talk to Pete. So Kay. Lady Ada, people can add stuff to their cart, and when they add stuff to their cart, they're going to notice that they get free stuff. Yes, we What's have the, freebies activated there? this summer. If you order $99 or more, you'll get a free Permaproto half-size breadboard. You can use that to take your solderless breadboard project and solder to this Permaproto to make it permanent, thus making your project durable and last a long time. We also have at $149 a free uh, sew-on or iron-on badge. You'll get a different one each time. We've got all sorts of skill badges from robotics to LEDs to Bitcoin to Tesla coils, all the badges that you wish you'd gotten when you were a Cub Scout uh, but didn't exist. We have them. And uh, you'll see which one you get when you check out. It'll give you a warning. In 199 or more, you'll get free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. That's insured, trackable shipping. It's real good. You're going to get your stuff. And it's not going to get lost in a pile. And then 299 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express. This is our premier all-in-one learning platform for coding and electronics. You can use it with MakeCode, uh, Circuit Python, Arduino. You can use it with MakeBlocks. You can use it with TeenyGo. You can use it with uh, fourth, you can use it with, uh, what was the last Lisp. one? Scheme, yeah, there's a Scheme port for the Cortex M0, as well as other many exotic languages, and it's got all these sensors and buttons and stuff built in, so you can kick off your project without any soldering. All right. This is the freebies. For shipping stuff, um, UPS ground, best in the US, uh, trackable, reliable, um, postal, we'll get it there a little cheaper, a little but a little bit slower, and yeah. sometimes it disappears. And DHL is good for international. Um, same day shipping in New York for 11 a.m. If you check out your zip code supported, it will show up same day in New York City. All right, before we get to Pete, Lady Ada, we have a show and tell. We've been doing this forever. We did. I'll zip um, through them because we. I know we got a lot was, going on. There was folks on the show and tell. They showed some cool stuff. What did they yeah. show this week? Well, we had Phil B. who came by and showed a sweet Pepper's Ghost demo using an upcoming board, the Monster Mask. And he showed how you can reflect the TFTs uh, through acrylic even, not even like a half mirror mask, just like plain acrylic works great. And you can have the um, image from the TFT float in front of your face and it looks uh, very cool and ghostly. So it's like the Pepper's Ghost demo. Um, JP is back from holiday and this week he's doing a NeoPixel color picker demo. 
in all in make code uh, using cursors and blocks and like a full UI. So not only can you make games in make code arcade, but you can also make uh, UI elements and uh, very powerful. I'm surprised you can do as much as as you can. So check out the demo. He's going to be doing a guide this week and then tomorrow on his live show. He'll probably go over how he coded this up. This amazing project, Melissa is back to working on her robotic vehicle. She was working on it uh, for a while and took a break and, and I think has more time now. And so this robotic vehicle is all in CircuitPython. It's using a, uh, a Metro Grand Central as the base uh, brain. And uh, what she added this week was RC control. So RC uh, transmitters use eight channels of PWM that they send. And so she used the pulse in module in CircuitPython to read all eight channels. And for the demo right now, she's having um, one channel control the NeoPixels. It's a good way to test it out. Uh, more to come. No and Pedro talked about and showed off their flip out microphone case. You can flip out over it. We'll be showing a video about it later on in the show. But uh, about it's a lot about uh, snap fit case design, which is really nice. No screws needed, um, but still secure. And also print in place hinges. Again, it's a, a neat capability that 3D printers have that you can't do with um, normal uh, machine injection molding, but you can make a movable piece that can't be disassembled because it's it's you know made together into one one piece that is they move but they're interconnected. Yeah, we're gonna have a video yeah. of that. Yeah, so. very interesting. And Scott is having an OLED party, uh, adding OLED uh, native support to display in Circuit Python. He's got three or four OLEDs on his desk, just having a good time. Uh, he's got grayscale OLEDs. He's got big OLEDs. He's got small OLEDs. It's just all OLEDs. And he got um, the Rhododendron Great Fit add-on that Kate Tempkin just released. It allows uh, the Great Fit to be used as a high-speed USB analyzer, which everybody wants and doesn't want to pay a thousand bucks for. So that'll be really cool when that comes out. Um, Tom uh, came by from the community. He works at a science museum for kids, and uh, they have a static display demo uh, where they like, you know, you. Just you staticize like a, a rod and then you hold it above this um, metal contraption and these two thin um, aluminum foil pieces f uh, split apart and he said his demo has been used for like 150 years and it's okay but he wants to make something cooler so using a bunch of uh, high accuracy um, high precision TLV op amps um, these are very nice op amps from TI uh, he made an 8x10 grid that can detect static um, that's coming off of, of the uh, wool rubbed rod and it shows it up as red LEDs. Very interesting interactive demo and the, probably the first time I've seen somebody make a static detector. It's kind of neat. Uh, Dan C is making amazing projects. This week it's a maze. That's why it's amazing. Uh, he has a project and guide live on Learn, so check that out. Uh, he uses an e ink display to draw a maze that's uh, automatically generated using some C code, so it's different every time. And the maze is uh, in black, and then you can press a button to display the solution in red if you can't solve the maze. And um, Chris C uh, made a simple but effective home automation project with a Pi Zero and a relay. It shows up as a web server. You go there, you press the button, the light turns on, the light turns off. Uh, he's going to be taking this further, but this is a great first step in home automation in uh, Linux uh, development. And finally, C. Scott uh, has come by, took a couple months off, so we missed him. But he is still working on recycling those NeoPixel strips. Uh, he's been busy with family stuff and work stuff. Um, he told a story about Pepper's Ghost in California Disney World, Disneyland, is apparently the largest sheet of installed glass uh, in America. It's a yeah. single sheet that was, I guess they helicoptered it in. I don't know that we're, well, how they got it in, but they had to remove the roof. What glass lift? I don't know. So they can't take it out. Yeah, this know. is a gigantic glass. And he also, um, wanted to shout out to Kyoto Animation Studio, which uh, recently had a really uh, terrible um, attack, arson attack on them that um, uh, killed, murdered some of the people who work there. And uh, if you're interested in anime or animation, please uh, check out and purchase some animation from them to help support them through this this period. They're, uh, they make great work. It's one of his favorite studios and they're just struggling right now. Yeah, he's gonna send some information so I can get it up on the, the blog. Okay. All right. That's Chantal. All participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. If you're a kid, please have a guardian like entity do that. Um, it's part of our Adafruit live series of shows, and that brings us to our special okay. guest. Okay. Lifetime. 
Yay! All right! Yay! Yay! Yay. Okay. No, thank you so much for having me. You're so patient. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got through. We got through some of the show. We're, you don't have to be on the entire time, but we, but we do have a lot to get through. So um, this was. Uh, I, I grabbed this. This is your uh, your Twitter profile, and yeah. then your 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 GitHub. And I can tell you're busy. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of stuff going on. Uh. So um, introduce yourself. But before I, you know, I think the first time I saw your name was when Corey Doctorow started writing about you on like Boing Boing because oh, he, he has yeah. a real good eye for what's going on. I think it was it, he he pointed to a blog about machine learning. It happened to be yours. So I hit subscribe. You know, I, I use RSS because I'm oh, old. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, like, I love that I'm, stuff. I'm old yeah. and I love the internet, but, you know, like, turns out. <laughs> and uh, I have an RSS reader. And uh, every time I'd see a cool thing, and I think maybe it was in April, you had this article, What Machine Learning Needs from Hardware. Mm. And I was like, oh, cool. And we, we had some machine learning stuff we were going to do, but then it all kind of just came together recently. So you're here now. You're, you're in New York. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do at Google? And, and all um, that. So I have the best job. Uh, I get to work on open source stuff. Yeah. Um, Check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get to work on all of this. Uh, I get to work with some amazing people, like some of the biggest pulsating brains in kind of the machine learning world. Um, I get to work on us. The same software that we've open sourced is actually also used for internal Google projects. Gotcha. Like it's exactly the same stuff. So we have lots and lots of people building really cool kind of internal Google things using uh, TensorFlow and machine learning. Um, and I get to go out and sort of help people in the community yeah. actually build all of these amazing, like people are always coming to me with these kind of mind blowing projects that I would never think of mm. that they want to build. And I get to kind of like figure out how we can help them with that. Yeah, you've yeah. been busy because I, 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 I see your, your, your fingerprints on lots of different thing so there's the the tensorflow world yes. there is the tensorflow like machine learning on the edge the low power stuff and then yes. like it seems like all of a sudden this is all finally coming together yes i don't know if you if you feel that way yeah no i mean it's it's really cuz from the machine learning research side um everybody on our team is and you know in wider google is somewhat in awe of people who can actually build hardware and who yeah. can build like solar? It's kind of neat, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> works for me. Yeah, um, and the chance to actually get like we've been building these models which can understand like images, can understand people talking, can kind of sort of tell what's happening when you're moving the accelerometer and things like yeah. that. But without physical devices to put them into, like they they they're only half the story. If we can actually get mm. the this machine learning stuff that we're doing out into the physical world in real sort of objects that can kind of interact with people and the rest of the world, then mm. we've got this amazing chance to build you know things that we've never been able to build before. All right, so I'm going to start from the beginning because I know there's a lot of people that are experts, but there's way more beginners than people who have not even heard of this stuff. So we'll we'll start. So first up, um, you got to you got to tell folks what is a TensorFlow, and then what's TensorFlow Lite? Yes. Because there's TensorFlow, and then there's TensorFlow Lite, and I think that's, uh, and then there's TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. For microcontrollers. <laughs> yeah, so all of that on there. Pro. Yeah, I Plus. know, Express, and so, Extreme. You know, yeah. I figured we'd start with this. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, so, take it away. <laughs> so um, TensorFlow is what we use internally for machine learning at Google. Um, and we've also open sourced it, and we actually now have more external contributors than we have internal Google contributors. Okay, well that's success. Um, so you're not just yeah. it's not just y'all. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I will apologize right now for the length of my GitHub issues um, <laughs> backlog. But I, mean, I, I, also, I have 1,200 <laughs> repos, I mean, get, so like get in line. I mean, yeah. get I'm to, sure I have like just, 20 more issues. Just more inbox. <laughs> Yeah. So TensorFlow was always designed with the idea that we wanted to be out in the world. Um, when we released it sort of four years ago, it had Android support sort of with the very first like 0.1. Yeah. Um, but a struggle is that the full TensorFlow is almost 100 megabytes of code uh, because it's designed for servers, it's designed for GPUs, it's designed for this these really big environments. Yeah, you need like NVIDIA monster power ah, yeah and and actually you can we've managed to squeeze it down so you can run it on um, 
the Raspberry Pi, the full TensorFlow. Okay. Yeah. So That's good. if you want to do training and things like that, you can actually just do pip install TensorFlow on the Raspberry Pi, which yeah. we're, we're quite proud of. Yeah. Um, and Ford just came out and it's a lot faster, so exactly. it probably will run pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, but it's it's still, if you're looking at like megabytes and megabytes, that's way too big to put into an app yeah. on a mobile phone, you know, on Android or iOS if you want to download it. So we then came up with TensorFlow Lite, which yeah. was aimed at, okay, it's still a full part of the TensorFlow family, but let's squeeze down the footprint and let's focus on instead of training, because you aren't probably going to be doing much training on a mobile device, though there are some reasons why you might. Um, but in most cases, you just want to do what we call inference or running models that have already been trained. Um, and so that squeezed it down to maybe um, like three or 400 kilobytes uh, in increase in your binary size, mm -hmm. um, increase in your app size. Um, and that's great for like iOS and Android, but um, over the last sort of 18 months or so, uh, we've always known that we wanted to target microcontrollers, uh, things with like only hundreds or tens of kilobytes of memory. Mm. So TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers <laughs> is... Um, That's on the... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it makes sense because you can load and process with TensorFlow, and I'm looking at this chart too, but then building and training models, you're using yeah. you know, one of these, but then deploying, like you're using probably TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. Exactly. Like, that's, that's all I can... Yeah. That's it. You're just you're just running the model. Yeah. Maybe you can get. Maybe you'll use it as an input device to go to a server. Yes. Yeah. But you're gonna if you're on a microcontroller, your option is TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers, and and that's that's the one that's optimized for a very small. Exactly. Small, yeah. Small chip. Okay. All right. So that that's the differences, and and I think this chart does um, a pretty good job of explaining like where you build it, where you load it, where you process pre-process it, and then yeah. deploying. All right. So. Um, so now we're up to t TensorFlow Lite and TensorFlow microcontrollers, and this was another one, and I think this kind of goes to what you were saying. You do use the desktop and mobile web for TensorFlow, and there's TensorFlow.js, so that's that's yes. in, that's a JavaScript. And that's, that's super, like, that's really nice and approachable. It's great for running in sort of, you know, browser environments. You can run okay. it on the Raspberry Pi, uh, you know, through the browser, and even through mm. things like Node if you want to run. So it's it, if you're working in a JavaScript environment, you know, you have this really great option for using TensorFlow.js. Got, Got it. And then you, as you move along, the smaller the device, like, you know, the more yeah. on the edge it is, you go to phones and then eventually microcontrollers. Yeah. Got it. And then uh, the other things, uh, this is the estimated, so this is where I think folks could uh, hear, like, the translation of this. So what is... Uh, the each section here. There's a save model, light converter. Yeah. Um, we know what they are because we like we've been living yes. we've been living with the machine. <laughs> tearing your hair. Yeah, we, yes. we've been making <laughs> TF light models. But what so what, have some hair. what is this yes. gradient of different things that you can do? So um, when you're building a model in Python, you're probably wanting to use a pretty high level API. Um, usually, like Keras is the one that's most popular and that we're you know standardizing around um, to actually build these models and then say, hey, I'm going to train this for like several hours or several days or even like weeks for some of the larger models. And is that in Python? And right that's now? Or, um, it's in Python or Swift. Okay. There's actually some really interesting work um, happening with Chris Latner of LLVM fame, um, actually getting Swift as a sort of a first class uh, language. Got it. But it's in a high level language that you would be used to using on kind of the desktop. Yeah. Um, but then you want to take that trained model and kind of squeeze it down and kind of get rid of all of the bits you don't need when you're only running prediction. Um, and so some of these things, you know, the saved model and the TF Lite converter, we're working on simplifying them. Um, but at the moment, you have to sort of jump through these various transformation stages to take all of those weights um, those numerical values that kind of store the connections of your network after it's been trained and kind of put it into a form um, that you can just load, like a really simple file that you can load into your inference engine at the TF Lite side. Um, and honestly, this is where most of the uh, pitfalls actually are because when you're working in a Python environment creating models, 
it's pretty easy to create models that are very hard to run on a really resource constrained kind of mobile phone. Yeah, they're just Android. assuming like, hey, you have infinite memory and infinite CPU, yes. and then you're like, well, I don't actually. Yeah. And um, for a lot of these, you have to do the inference at a reasonable rate. Like, if yeah. you can't do the video one frame per second, nobody's going to use it. It's yeah. just too slow. Exactly. So it tends to there tend to be a lot more constraints about what you can do with your model. Um, and you hit those constraints when you start trying to export. Um, so, and we're still working on improving like the error messages and things like that. Mm. It's still very much a work in progress. And I would say the majority of like the GitHub issues we see are around um, these, these sort of uh, conversion problems. So if you are experimenting and hitting these, it's not you. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, it's something that we're that's why we put together a guide. We, you know, I wrote a guide on like how I basically got it all working to do the voice trained models because like that was like I don't know I spent like maybe thirty hours total yeah. getting getting to that point and like I learned a lot but I also like there's a lot of back and forth of like I tried this one thing and then I didn't uh, but I did come up with like here is a step by step of like exactly how to how to do it um, but that's going to change. I mean it's very fast moving code like every yes. day there's new commits. So I think it's going to be interesting to see. I think, you know, it's it's exciting and it's interesting and it's new, but I think people just, if they're getting into this, they have to just be understanding that, you know, it's not going to be a very smooth process yet. Um, this is not a good thing if you have a project due on Friday and it's Wednesday and you're like, I'm going to do machine learning. Yeah, but it is I'm a good time to get that. started because a lot of things, it's kind of like, you know, grow, you know, growing up in the 80s or 90s, if you, have, if you use computers a little bit, you get all that knowledge that you get to carry forward all this time. So I feel like if you're going to get involved with machine learning, like starting out with M TensorFlow Lite on microcontrollers is a good way to get going because it's, it's a little tiny bubble yeah. that you can, like, you're not going to have to worry about this giant computer machine that's like the fans running all the time. Like, yeah. you can just, like, you can, you can start playing around with some of this stuff now. So, um, speaking of, um, so for some of this, um, this is the get up and running slide that's here. Load your model, transform the data, run so it. So easy. Yeah, use resulting output. So but, just look at these arrows. But, but, you know, a lot of this for the folks who are like, well, what can this do? So we have a demo um, that we're going to do a live demo. Uh, Lamar's going to do this one. No, we're going to do it. <laughs> nah, It'll right. work out. And the, the demo that, that we made was based off the uh, TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers yes, no demo. And I think you put this together. Yeah, right? I mean, together with the rest of the team. Yeah. 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 So there was... Um, I read the, you did a paper on this. Yes. And then you, you had a way for people had to opt in and they would speak a word. Yes. And there was like a few thousand of them. And I downloaded the, the, this giant yes. 10 gigabyte zip. <laughs> and it's like, and when you go through it on a mac real fast, it's like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and it's every, it's every way if someone could say yes. Yeah. And then, and then that's just like one folder. Yeah. And then it's no. And they're all like numbered in a certain way. And when you're, you're training a model, um, for TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers, it's looking at all the yeses. And then it's turning it into this little tiny file eventually that if it hears yes and it thinks it's yes, thanks, then it'll, you can start to do stuff with it. And when we saw the demos out there, we were like, oh, you know, we got this cool PyGamer and this cool Pi badge. We, can, we could put a graphic on it and we can give some feedback, and we could do audio feedback, so that we're weird, like we're just coming at it a different way, which is, which is why you do open source. Yeah. You know, and we're like, this is kind of neat, because you can get real-time feedback from what's happening on the, inside this like brain. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's try a live demo, which is always a mistake. Um, you want this, me to do it, or? Well, you know, I kind of feel like you should try it, and then we should try it, let Pete yeah. try it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Oh, yeah, so we got, this is actually the kit that we yeah. have. In and this the, is from our existing shop. hardware. This is a SAMD51. Uh, we have a graphic that says, hey, you're running TensorFlow. We don't need to use Wi-Fi yeah, right now. Yeah, it's not the Wi-Fi because I'm doing Wi-Fi experiments, yeah. but it's not actually running Battery Wi -Fi. powered, so it hits, it hits, it hits the things that y'all are interested yeah. in, in doing. I'll prove it's battery powered. Yeah, prove it's battery powered. <laughs> and we have, um, we call it a stem connector, and we have a microphone. And the way this one works is we wanted to show that um, the person can look at what's on the screen. They can give, get instructions on what to do. Um, when they press and hold a button and they say either yes or no, it'll display one of my favorite characters from Tron, which is Bit. <laughs> and Bit only does yes or no. And if it does yes, it'll, you'll actually be able to hear it. And before Lamar does the demo, one of the other weird things that we like to do as a company is do assistive technology. So let me um, put us back here too. So we like to do assistive technology. And one of the ideas is 
what if um, your vision impaired? Can you still do machine learning? Well, yes, you, you, yes, you can. And so the, the buttons that we're working on have little indents and maybe braille. Um, we're 3D printing them. They're not on this one yet. And so you'll be able to feel which button to press. Um, it'll speak on what you're, what you're doing. And we thought that would be neat for, and we'll show some of these other demos. We have one that when you say up, it moves a bubble wand up, down moves down, but that could easily be a hospital bed yeah. or something. And one of the neat things about this, and I was trying to explain it to, to someone who's like, well, I don't know what machine learning is. And I said, I said, well, in this particular example, we're getting voice recognition on a chip for free, which is kind of neat. Like yeah. we don't have a voice recognition chip inside of this, but that's, that's what it does. So you ready? You want to do this demo? Whenever you're, do the whenever demo. you're done. Do the demo. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay. I think it got confused when I removed the power. Yeah. All right, All right here we go. Demo. Live demo time. Yeah, I'm doing demo. Yes. No. Okay, <laughs> now let's try another voice. Right. And maybe if you try it, start right, with so, no. So press A uh, and then work, it works. Yeah, you press and hold A and then start with no. No. Uh-oh. All right, try again. No. <laughs> it's No, there we are. Oh, you got thank it. God. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again with the yes. Yes. It's good at yes. Right. <laughs> Not bad. So, so two different people, um, very, very uh, tiny microcontroller. What's the specs on this one, Lamar? So this one is, it's, a, it's 120 megahertz. Uh, microcontroller. It's a Cortex M4, um, and it, I think I, this version may not even have some optimizations in it. But it's just it's just a plain microcontroller. Like there's no special hardware accelerator. Like a lot of times people talk about machine learning where they say they have a GPU or have accelerator. Um, this doesn't have that, and that's what's really neat about it is you don't need a special chip. So if you have a chip that you like, such as like the ESP32, which has built-in Wi-Fi, or the NR52840, which has Bluetooth, you can add simple machine learning to it without having to increase your bill of material size, which is a really important thing for engineers. They are like, well, I don't want to buy an expensive chip, and I don't, or maybe I don't need that much intense machine learning. So what's neat, it's really just running natively. Yeah, uh, and the, you know, one of the things we've really tried to do is make the code as easy to understand as mm. we can, because like you were saying, uh, a lot of people think machine learning is this kind of big, scary kind of thing in the cloud. Um, and when you actually get down to it, if you look at the C++ code that's kind of implementing this, I think it's a few thousand lines, um, and you sort of step through and you see what it's doing, I think a lot of people out there in the sort of embedded world will just be like, oh, is that all it is? Yeah, <laughs> it's actually, well, I read, the, I read part of the paper, but for, for people who, who do Adafruit stuff, we've had a couple of, uh, FFT projects where you look at the spectrum yeah. and you do audio projects where it's like the bass and the treble and you have like little lights going and you know we have code for this you know the the Simsys code or we have a library to do FFT calculations this is basically just taking a lot of FFTs and then it just puts them into a grid and then it just matches that is close up to, you know over time and frequency so you have a time and frequency graph and then it just overlays that over the yes and the no time frequency graph and just sees Eh, is it a fuzzy, close enough <laughs> fit? And that's all it's doing. This machine learning is actually not, the complicated part is getting that time yeah. frequency matrix. That's hard. <laughs> actually doing the fit is not that hard at all. I mean, it's hard, but it's not incredibly hard. It's something you can do on a microcontroller. And that's all it's doing. It's just taking a bunch of FFTs and then you know, spreading them over time and then trying to, to match. So that's the, that's the first one we did. And we wanted to have something for folks. So we, did, we put a kit together, it sold out pretty fast. Um, we'll have more in stock soon, but it's exactly what it's you saw. This is Jelly. Yeah, this is uh, Jelly. She works in new products. And um, it comes with the badge and the microphone and a battery and the cable you need. And we also had a graphic. So it's like, here's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess you get the word yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And so after we did this one, we thought, well, um, the yes, no model is out there. Let's try to, let's try to train our own. And let's try to do up down. Okay, and then twenty hours later. Yeah. So we train the no, model. This is just no, the first time. That's after we got used to it, it's like yeah. two hours to train the model. We train the model. So I'm gonna play the video because it, it's bubbles and stuff like that, and so we'll we'll play the video. Okay, so more see. models yeah. coming up. Down. Up.
down. Up. Okay. okay, so that one we used same microcontroller, um, same microphone, and we attached a servo to it. Servo just plugged in, so it's still battery powered. And that's, I think it's one of the first uh, TensorFlow light for microcontrollers that uses a servo. Yeah. You tell me. This is the, that's that's one of the reasons I wanted to have yeah. you on the show. It's like because we're weird and we just start doing weird stuff, and then it's like, well, who do we find out if yeah. this is? Are we just is this something someone's already done, or is this like? Cutting edge. I, yeah. haven't, I haven't seen any. I mean, I know people internally. I remember um, somebody um, on the team was using a little robot to kind of go backwards and forwards. That's one of the ones we're going to do next. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But I've, I haven't seen anybody doing any like public examples and public demos. Okay. So right, this, is, good. this is super useful. Good. So then the next one we did was all right, we're getting greedy now because we're like, <laughs> we did up down. We got yes, no. Let's try to do three words. Now, eventually yeah. you run out of space. Yeah. You know, microcontrollers will have more space, will get faster. We got plenty of Moore's Law for the people out there. Like, Moore's Law is over. Yep, probably for computers. Not for the stuff we're doing. Yeah. We got, we got a little bit of room. So this one is the triple word one. But this one, we did something really neat. Um, Moore did this thing called Arcada for our, our video game stuff in Arduino. Maybe you can explain it better than me, but we, we made it so you can easily put things on it and there's a JSON file. But. Yeah, we can basically configure it so instead of having to recompile the TensorFlow Lite micro core, it actually loads from disk. Basically, you have a file, the TF Lite file, and it loads that into memory and then it basically executes it. So you can drag and drop different TensorFlow Lite files. So, what, you know, I have only one code running in the micro, and then you just slot in which TF Lite project you want to do, and then you just have to have a JSON file to tell it. Oh, you know, slot zero is this word, or slot one is it? Because that's not in the TensorFlow Lite model. It only does the matching, and it spits back a number. Um, so then we just have a little bit of code that goes with it. So it's a little config file. Yeah, and I guess you were saying people normally get hung up on not this one. Where's the? Uh, where's the? I'm trying to find the right chart. No, that was the one. No, that was the right the, one. The previous one. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't. I I just recently found this slide deck. So this is what, when, as soon as we start playing around with this, I'm just like, what can we do to make this easier? Yeah. So it's more like cartridges going in. Like, yes. I, like it'd be neat if we had little models. Yeah. And then instead of having to recompile an Arduino each time, wouldn't it be neat if you just change the JSON file? Yeah. So that's, that's what we ran into. And our job is usually, how do we get someone going in five minutes? Yes. So the hello world, we blink LEDs. But for machine learning, the hello world is you might say hello to it. <laughs> so we didn't train that model yet. But yeah. you know, we wanted to be able to have a kit for someone who's maybe never done anything, yes. <laughs> speak into a microphone, and something happens pretty good. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to be like, you know what? I don't like this. You yeah. know, machine learning, eh. um, wake me up when it's you know, you know, years from now. So we, the next video we have is the triple model. And we have um, a view on our, our desktop computer so you can see what happens when you plug in the, the model and the, uh, the device. So here we go. OK, Lady Ada, we have another uh, machine learning TensorFlow light demo we're going to do. What are we doing tonight? It's TensorFlow Thursday. <laughs> yeah. It's time for another TensorFlow demo. This time, uh, last night, overnight and this morning, I trained a new model. Uh, last night, we did cat dog. Um, mm -hmm. And then before then, we did yes, no. But now, we're trying out new things. Cat, dog, bird, a triple word model. Yeah, this is the first one that we've ever seen. And uh, it was also to test how this works, and you were able to just drop the model in, add another line in the JSON file, and we're off. Yep. So it's going to work like before. So if it's uh, if we say cat, it'll show a picture of a cat. If we say yeah. dog, it'll it'll show a picture of a dog. Woof. And bird, it'll show a picture of a bird. Tweet tweet. So let's try this out. Okay. Dog. Bird. Cat. Yay! Did dog bird cat? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, that one, that, that one was a little bit harder. Yeah. Because I think some of the words don't have as many yes. sample sets, and so we found the ones that had the most yeah. are the easiest. Like when I say cat, it loves it, but it wasn't 
a biggest fan. But when he says dog, it always works. Yeah. yeah. Even though he's not a dog person, I'm not always a cat person, but that's and, how it is. And one of the things we'll probably, if we can put a link out, we're still trying to gather more open source data. We actually have a website that you can go to to donate your voice, uh, which I'll actually, uh, I'll send you the uh, yeah, that'd link be great. to. Because, uh, yeah, the more data we can get out there and the more words, um, like the better job we can do on these models. So. Yeah, one of the things we're thinking of, and we'll probably ask you about this later, is we think personalized machine learning training. Like, you know, when you go to the gym, and well, I don't go to the gym anymore, but uh, <laughs> I, should, I should probably go to the gym. But they would always say, like, hey, do you want personal training? You know, like they upsell you on something. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, personal training for machine learning. Because what I would want to do is record my own voice a bunch of times just for testing. Yeah just to be able to have that sample set. Well, one of the things I really want to do is be able to put together a little um, chip where a kid can tell a toy what its name is. Yeah, and exactly. And then have yeah. the toy respond to that name exactly. in the future. Mm. We should, we've, I've been experimenting, there's a technique called transfer learning, uh, which is a really nice way of taking like a pre-trained model and then just doing a little tweaking on the final layer to retrain it for like new data that comes in. Um, there's an example called TensorFlow for Poets. Uh, I know about this, yeah. Yes. <laughs> which That's I put right. together a few years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which um, does it for images. But I've been you know, spending some time on my weekends trying to tweak around and get that working for, um, uh, for audio as well, because that is mm. my sort of dream as well. I'd, I'd love to be able to have it recognize new words that people speak. Mm. On eBay, I found a... Um, the movie AI came out, and they had the super toy teddy, and it doesn't. It's a teddy bear that like it, it's AI and it yeah. talks and everything. So I have one over there, and I, <laughs> and, I, and I actually want to stuff it with some of this stuff. So yeah, yeah. maybe I'll talk to you about that because that would be neat to have it. Like you, you could tell it its name and it recognizes and it. It has a, a different connection with the kid yeah. than just like the default stuff. All right, so those are our demos, um, and then I had a couple other things. Um, this is just the explanation of. You know, a small computer on a single circuit, no operating system, uh, tens of kilobytes of RAM and flash, only CPU and memory, and our peripherals. So that's what these run on. Um, this is the um, interpreter and the micro interpreter. Can you talk a little bit about this framework so folks know like where where we live in the stack and like like I don't know what the flat buffer format is. Yeah. Um so one of the things we needed was we needed a, a file format that would be really easy to load and that you wouldn't have to do any parsing and that you wouldn't have to like allocate any extra memory for uh, when you pulled in the model. Like we wanted it to be as close as possible to kind of memory mapping in these big arrays of numbers, which is what most of the model is. And we found that the uh, flat buffer format was a really nice way of doing that. Um, it's a way of uh, effectively memory mapping um, a data structure that you can just kind of memory map from disk and then you can use it directly uh, without having to do any kind of, you know, extra allocation or parsing or any sort of, you know, any of that overhead stuff. Um, and what we actually end up doing on microcontrollers without file systems is turning that file into a C data array. Um, and then just compiling it in as if it's kind of just another piece of source code. Um, but then we're able to access it directly. So it's really just kind of a, um, a nice technique to be able to um, access these potentially quite big um, models without having any you know, things like memory allocation. Yeah, so you're like, you have the file, but you're not like parsing it and then creating new data structures. No. You're actually applying a struct yeah. onto the memory location and you just have to make sure it's aligned right, and then yeah. you can just access it. And because microcontrollers, well, modern ones, flash and, and yeah. RAM are the same memory, or they're the same 32 bit memory space. Yeah. It just works so you can save a ton of RAM because you have to. RAM is usually extremely expensive and rare on microcontrollers. Exactly. All right. And then moving right along, because I wanted to make sure we covered all the things. Um, this is a, an, an explanation of, of basically probably the demo that we just did, right? Like. Yeah. and, and um, also kind of where this sort of demo fits in the, the bigger scheme of things, mm -hmm. because this is only doing like a few different words. Um, and what people often do, like if you think about Alexa or Hey Google, they'll have something running on a microcontroller or DSP, um, like on your phone, so it doesn't drain the battery. 
uh, because you don't want the full CPU running because that's going to be using like half a watt or something like that. You want to run on a DSP which is only using like a few like milliwatts. Um, and then if it thinks it's heard you saying that word, uh, then it will wake up the full CPU to do the rest, process the rest of the sentence Got and it. kind of maybe send stuff off to the server or run models yeah. on that. So it's this interesting idea of having a cascade of like a really small, like 20 kilobyte model, which, you know, is only listening out for like particular things. This is called wake words, right? Yeah, exactly. The wake word. And then if it thinks it's heard something, then you wake up the bigger, like, you know, and you maybe yeah. talk to the cloud. Yeah, that'll be interesting because we have that ability with our, um, we're calling it like Edge Badge or something, because you have yeah. to. Because um, like, <laughs> this one's called Pi Badge, it's Python, but we're like, oh, we'll call it Edge Badge. Um, but that would be neat because we have a little tiny microcontroller, and then maybe if there's more heavy lifting, maybe that's when it's sending, sending it off. And then last up, you have a, a roadmap, which is always good. Oh, good. Um, oh, yeah, we're so yeah. what are we doing? More, yeah. more <laughs> device support, or doing coming soon, optimizations and more sample code. Yeah. So is that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's. Um, Really, we want to make this uh, much more accessible to people. So the work that you're doing is fantastic. Um, having more examples, we think, is the single best way of yeah. actually helping people get into this. Yeah, most people learn by taking apart something yeah. that works. Also, they want to know, is it working? Because they can only, you know, there's so yeah. many variables with this stuff, I think. Yeah. You know, especially with the speech, it's like, am I, am I speaking right? Is my microphone not working? So in our demo, we actually have, like, you know, the five steps. Like, you start with... Just run the one that has the internal memory. You should be seeing this printout. Next, you know, record and playback so your microphone is working. Yeah, there's so many things you have to test because if it's not recognizing your words, it could be a lot of different things, some of which are not your fault. Exactly, <laughs> and like we, we see, you know, the nice thing about this stuff too is it's like we're showing off speech demos here, but we can do the same, uh, we can use the same code to actually, um, with different models to do image recognition. Uh, mm. So we're working on some things like, hey, is there a person in the picture? Yeah. If there's a person yeah. in the camera image, then you might want to like wake up something else. Yeah. Or you might want to kind of. Also, you have like low latency, so you have instant feedback. Yeah. So you know, if you do have a cloud back for voice recognition, which most voice systems do, when you have the wake word, they can only say like, I'm here. Yeah. You know, like hold on, I'm waking up, and like just like humans, like you say like, hey, and then. It takes them like a half a second to turn around and be like, okay, I'm listening to you now. Um, so mimicking the human expectations could be good for, for a, a good user experience. Cause it's like, we're, we're very understanding of failure, but it has to be within yes. the, the human models of failure that we, <laughs> we expect. Well, one of the things I want to do as well, talking about a more natural voice interface is actually see if we can do something around gaze detection. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if your device can tell if you're looking at it or not, yeah. it will be able to know whether it should be like listening and responding. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes with my iPhone, you know, I have the face ID. It's it can when it puts up a message and it's locked. If yeah. I look at it, it it'll unlock it, which is yeah. kind of what you want. Um, my previous life, I worked with Sony and uh, I got a chance to work on the iBo and the Cur the yeah. Curio, which uh, Curio is like I wish they would open source it because it was a humanoid robot, but whatever <laughs> but the iBuzz are still around and one of the Sony engineers told me um, that their strategy was to make it a puppy because it, it didn't really work that great but if it's a puppy it's cute yeah. when it bumps into the wall but if it's a dog it's a stupid dog <laughs> so, so they're like we turned into a puppy and it solved everything so that's why we're like we're trying to have that kind of fun five to ten minutes where maybe you're just swapping in models that's the first yeah. And that's a good classroom setting. Like, what is machine learning? What is this? And then eventually you can start doing more. But that's that's the idea. The same type of like human things where like maybe it notices you're looking at it. Maybe it's a wake word. Maybe it's something else. So, okay. okay. All right. So um, next up, if you have a uh, phone or whatever, you have someone with QR codes. This is how you get started. Yeah. Got that there. And then you have a book coming out. Um, I was an O'Reilly author, so congratulations on that. Um, Good luck. Your book will be late. This is how. <laughs> this, is how this is how it is. Sorry. So oh, you're wow. coming out. I've got 350 pages. <laughs> yeah. So you can get this on Safari right now and see. I think the intro and some of the things, but it's going to come yeah. out next year. And it's called um, Tiny ML, and that's going to be the next part of this. And if you do a cool project with all this stuff, you might get into the book. Yes. <laughs> you might get, there's you still might time. Get written in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm hedging my bet because it's like you know what I think an Adafruit tutorial might be in there. Yes. <laughs> so you're you're doing this book, Tiny ML. And um, just so folks know, so 
tiny ML, I assume it's tiny machine learning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that's that, that's something that covers or could cover everything. Could be TensorFlow, could be other things. I, I assume this is the bigger umbrella that's just like, yeah, you want to yeah, do machine exactly. learning and microcontrollers, this is the big umbrella. Because, you know, there have been other, like, there's other really interesting open source frameworks out there who are experimenting with machine learning. You know, obviously I'm on the TensorFlow team, so that's, yeah. you know, that's why I spend a lot of my, you know, a lot of my time. But um, there's a great um, little experimental framework called MicroTensor. Um, that an ARM uh, engineer put out sort of uh, a while ago, which does some really interesting stuff. So there's a lot of activity um, and a lot of different hardware as well coming out um, focused on, hey, can we run machine learning on this really kind of... And what, is really it, what does it mean, right? What is machine learning yeah. when it's that small? Yeah, exactly. What's it, what's it going to be most useful for? Like, you know, yeah. where are the killer applications? And okay. Yeah, we'll find out. And then... Um, so since Tiny ML's thing, there was a Tiny ML meetup um, last month, the first one, and then there's one tomorrow. Yes. So this is happening. Right. Yes, in the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay, so, not here. so at so. Qualcomm, there's a Tiny ML embedded machine learning meetup, Tiny ML enabling ultra low power ML at the edge, um, tomorrow at 6 p.m. If you're in Santa Clara. That's like when, if you know, you open a, a, you get Chinese food, you get the fortune cookie, you say, at the edge, at the end of the fortune cookie. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you will have an interesting life at the, at edge. the edge. So um, this was the, the, the this, is, this will be the second one, but the yes. first one was uh, just a couple weeks ago, or just a few weeks ago. And were you, at yeah. the, you were at the first one? Yeah, I was at the first one. And how'd it go? Um, it was really, it was really fun. Like, there were so many people with projects that I'd never thought of. Um, we actually That's are good. having an open mic um, for this one tomorrow night. Okay. Please, so, please take the idea of show and tell. Yes, please exactly. do it. And, and yeah, record it so and, people can see it. People yes, love that. Yeah, no, that's the biggest. And you're, you're on a phone. You're, you know? you're at Google, and I know that uh, there's different groups, but like maybe we could keep Hangouts going for a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because there's sunset, there's sunsetting Hangouts. I get it. There'll be something else, but maybe just like the machine learning people can use it. And then <laughs> there's also an event coming up, and I think I have a slide for that. Um, there's an event coming up, and it's the Tiny ML Summit. Uh, 2020 yeah. in yeah. February. This is yes. coming up in yeah. California. And so we actually had one in uh, February uh, of this year. Uh, it was kind of like the first one, um, and we really got together because it's this really interesting area where you have to have hardware people, you have to have machine learning people, you have to have people who are like building software infrastructure, and a lot of different people are working on it from their like their directions in their little worlds, but we don't really know each other and we don't really talk. Um, so trying to just get people together who are all interested in, hey, how do we run machine learning on these really tiny devices? Um, it's, it's really the big goal of this summit. It's just like, let's get us all together. Let's get, get us talking. Uh, you know, I'd love to have um, you know somebody from Adafruit there. Uh, if we can, you know, if you can beam out. us in, if you can beam yes. us in, we'll do it because we're good with live video. It's just yeah. hard. It's you hard. saw this was yeah, you were exactly. here. It's hard you to it. it's hard to get it's hard for us to leave like the four block radius. Yes, we have to run in Adafruit. <laughs> um, but that being said, the first one um, there was video recordings and all of the content was posted. So who's ever doing that? Yes. Um, hat tip and kudos and. Uh, we do hug reports instead of bug reports because, uh. like, bug reports kind of sound bad. <laughs> yeah. um, whoever did that, good work because oh, we were awesome. able to gra- we were able to like tune in and like okay, like we, we're keeping up with this stuff. All right, well that's um, I think we covered just about everything. Um, is there anything else? Uh, we didn't. You want to? No, no. I think um, you know. I just like to say thank you for all the work you've put in to like getting this machine learning demos up and running. It's been so yeah. cool to see, and you know the same to the like community out there. It's been. You know, what keeps me going is seeing all of these amazing, um, you know, things that people are putting together with this stuff. So. Yeah. Well, we, we have Machine Learning Monday now, so we'll have something interesting. Every yeah, week. we're trying yes. to put ourselves on a schedule <laughs> where it's Machine Learning Monday. But one way we look at it, too, is like there is there's giant companies and then there's independent developers and there's this whole ecosystem and, and menagerie of people doing this stuff. But I look at it like um, skateboarding and we're kind of doing skateboarding tricks now. Yeah. And I kind of feel like we just did a pretty cool trick. Like here's a neat trick. Like you can use JSON and like put these things in, and we have this yes/no, and we have graphics and everything. Like that's our trick, and we want someone else to do a trick, and then they publish their code, yeah. and then we build off of that, and we yeah. keep doing it. And so that's the idea: is by, by us putting this stuff out there and, and doing open source, is that we're we're not 
this is not a commercial package. This is not like this is not a this is not a finished good. Yeah. It's it's something that you can have fun and experiment with, and we want people to start doing tricks with it. So, okay. And at the end of the show, we're going to be giving one one of these away. Yeah. All right. So stay so, tuned. All right. So what do you want to do? We're going to keep doing the rest of the show because we're going to go to 9:30 on the show tonight. If okay. That's a, if that's okay with uh, everybody here. And we're gonna squeeze in everything. Well, I'm I'm chained to this desk. I actually can't. You leave. can't leave. <laughs> so I. That's so, why I don't see so me. So Pete, move. you're done for a bit. Uh, Lamore, do you wanna you wanna do the rest of the show? Yeah, I can't leave. I'm chained you to can't this leave? desk. Okay. All right. So let's uh let's kick it off for the rest of the show. You're okay. Good? Let's do this thing. Okay. Next up. And Pete, you can chime in at any time. Yes. That you I'm want. I'm gonna go get myself another soda. All yeah. right. All right. Well, you can have change. Yeah. <laughs> it's Make Code Minute. So this is Make Code Minute, and um, this week is a preview. JP's back from vacation. Yeah. So this He's is. He's all the, suntan. Yeah. Not really. This is the demo. <laughs> that um, JP showed this on the show. Yeah. But this is using Make Code, controlling NeoPixels, and you're able to use a really advanced interface, but it's all in make code so he'll be showing this off tomorrow at uh 4 p.m 4 p.m or whatever jp's just on in november yeah, it's 4 p.m 4 p.m well it's he's in different times so. different times why well, i don't remember but um interesting because it's not just for making video games you can also make user interfaces with it and so this is kind of fascinating to me that um make code arcade not just as a gaming platform but as a uh, user interface platform for applic like portable applications yeah that are you know arcadey <laughs> So that is JP's uh, demo. Yep, we'll next show, week. We'll show this off. This uh, week. Yeah, he'll show this off tomorrow. And then a guide this week, too. So stay okay. tuned. All right. Here we go. It is time for some Python on hardware. Blinka, 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 blinka. There's a lot going on. So in addition to all this machine learning stuff that we've been doing lately, we have a lot of other things. First up. 6,000 thanks. Thank you so much, everybody. We are now up to 6,000 subscribers on Python on microcontrollers. Wow. That, that's a lot. This is our fastest growing newsletter that we have. Right and now. it's chock full. I love it. Yeah. I send stuff. I contribute stuff. I read it. Yeah. It's like a snake eating its own tail. <laughs> uh, Hackspace Magazine, Circuit Python 410 got 10 out of 10 for speed for its operating system, which is crazy because we definitely do not focus on making sure circuit python is the fastest bare metalist you know down you know assembly you know it's not that it's it's, yeah. it's ease of use however we did a ton of extra work on it and now it's um three to five times faster depending on what you're doing yep and so, its graphics are also much faster yep. um and you know we're not sure we're going to get another big speed up for a bit we're adding more capabilities but that's how it goes a cycle of adding yeah. Uh, functionality and then adding in, updates. In fact, I want to show, this is one of the projects I've been working on. So we'll talk about some of these things later with um, some of the work that Nicholas is doing. But this is my um, PyPortal HyperCard-like demo. And it displays um, a HyperCard-like experience. And, and that's kind of what we wanted. And let me turn it. That's pretty good. So you can see it has buttons. This is all generated out of a JSON file. And uh, bing. And so you can have little buttons. And I'm going to go through this little interactive demo. Let me uh, try to get it in focus. There we go. I don't know why it keeps coming out. I'm going to put it there. There it is. So that screen redraw now is nearly instant. Yeah, much faster. And you can go through this little interactive fiction game. But Here. you get the point. And that's all generated live and dynamically. Yeah, so that's and it's much, faster. it's much, much faster with the graphics okay. and the text. I'll get Pete back here. OK. All right, so uh, that is the demo for this. Pete, while you were gone, we were talking about CircuitPython. <laughs> Four just got ten out of ten for its speed increases. Awesome. First first time we've you know we've got ten out of ten for the speed of something, <laughs> which is really good. Um, and uh, that was in the latest issue of Hackspace magazine. Katni and Scott did an embedded FM podcast. So if you're an embedded FM fam fan, check that out. Circuit Python Day is eight eight. So Coming up. Weeks from now. Yep, we have a lot of things going on. There is an event in New York City and there's also an event in India. Here's the poster for it. It is at the uh, Technical University for Women, and it's at James, uh, sorry, it's the 
Delhi Technical University for Women. Yep. And we have the address and information and more, and I have a lot of cool demos and CircuitPython stuff going on. Um, one little bug that came up that we think uh, Apple now fixed, yay. The latest version of iOS 13 beta, does no, it no longer deletes all the files off our yay. drives. Yeah, so. so you can see the files, <laughs> yeah. but right now there's no apps that can let you access the files because they just don't exist yet. But so. we can open it up. So we're very close to being able to do opening and saving Python files over a device from an iOS device mm. to a CircuitPython device. So that's very exciting. Cool. Uh, next up, if you want to get your board and have it join the 67 other boards that run CircuitPython. It's a party. It's a party. Um, and it'll show up on circuitpython.org slash downloads, and you'll be, maybe you'll be board 68. Um, we have a guide on that. We have a guide now. There is a new series of uh, CircuitPython libraries that now work with Quick. So if you use Quick from SparkFun, there's now a CircuitPython library that makes it work with the screens. This is kind of neat. Someone got a lizard, and when you get one of these types of lizard, you need to keep track of all the different things about the lizard. Here is an Adafruit Pi portal, and this is the name of the lizard it, goose. I guess the lizard is named Goose because it's not monitoring it, goose. It's a goose monitor. It's it's a monitoring a lizard called Goose. Yeah, <laughs> and so this is using um, Pi portal Python. Is it toasty? It's like up to 98 degrees. Yep. Toasty lizards. We had a follow-up for the hot air balloon team. Um, CircuitPython was in space, but it's also in low al altitude uh, sometimes now. And this is CircuitPython on high altitude ballooning. And this is from, let me make sure I get this right, because it's a specific school here. It is um, the Department of Aerospace Engineering at Iowa State University. And it's part of the Make to Innovate, Make M2I program. Mm. And this is the High Altitude Balloon Experiments and Technology, and Matt sent this in. So they're using this. They're mostly using CircuitPython because they need to maintain it longer than just all the C code they were, they were using. Nice. Um, someone made a Bitcoin tracker using <laughs> Circuit CircuitPython and PyPortal. That was kind of cool. There's like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. So I guess it's all, a lot. The all the different Bitcoins. Yeah. Um, the NVIDIA Jetson, Pete, you're probably familiar with this yeah. because it's uh, optimized for a lot of machine learning. They use Circuit uh, Python Blinka, which is our Linuxy Circuit Python. So you can put Circuit Python on a microcontroller, or you can put it on Linux, and it's just easier. Everything just works. Yep. So kind of like if you do something with TensorFlow, you probably do it in lots of different places. This is a really cool board. It's a string car, M0 Express. Um, this is now passed all its tests, so you'll probably see it soon. It's one of those little cars that go on a string. But it's it's just feather that just does that, has yeah. one job. Circuit Python power. String car. This is a Arduino Nano drop-in replacement using the SAM21, uh, the SAMD21, and it runs Circuit Python. Here's Blinka. Scott Halselman was here on Saturday, and we posted up the video that night. He showed all of his artificial pancreas stuff, and of course, uh, a lot of folks know his work from the Pi Portal project that he did that showed his live glucose uh, measurements on a Pi Portal using CircuitPython. Then we had a giant board um, update. This is a power consumption post on Crowd Supply. If you're curious about the uh, latest with the giant board by Grow Boards, check that out. Redmere posted up a recap of EuroPython and all the games and things that you can play with. Um, it's Pew Pew is the name of the yep. device. And then the new games are now posted up as well. So if yeah. you're at your I think Python, it's like a bicolor LED matrix, we yeah. tricolor LED matrix, and you can, uh, yeah, make simple but fun games with it. And it's restricted, but that's actually kind of a nice thing because you, you won't be able to make too complicated games. You have to keep them simple. Um, this is a screenshot from a video. Nicholas, who is the author of Moo, did a Python hypercard experiment. And this is using the thing I just showed a couple minutes ago, um, reading and writing to a JSON file that'll allow you to do interactive fiction and Python your own adventure games. Don't call them choose your own adventure. It's someone else's trademark. And um, you can build stuff like this. And we got inspired by, if you grew up on HyperCard, um, this is me putting the HyperCard image on a Pi portal. So I'm like, hey, we're, the screen size is looking pretty good. And we also just saw the movie um, General Magic. And we have a General Magic device here, a Magic Cap device. It's like, okay, we're getting really close to being able to do these things. Uh, microcontrollers are now able to do this stuff that the, the top of the line stuff just did a few years ago. 
and then we have some more things that we're doing with cursors so you can make UIs and more inside of CircuitPython. And then... It's an OLED party! Yeah, and then OLED, OLED, OLED. OLED Scott's working on this stuff. Um, he showed Getting them, them going. Show it's slowly making its way into mainline, so yep. uh, if you've been wanting to use OLED displays with CircuitPython and have them work with Display.io, which is great because you can do bitmaps and animations and sprites and text and fonts, that is coming very soon. And then we had a little bit about Circuit Playground, Blue Fruit, Express, and this uses the Nordic NRF uh, 52840. Um, we're probably going to try to get TensorFlow running on that. I don't see why not. It's a Cortex M4, and it's actually yeah. got tons of RAM on it. Yeah, and this is um, going to be our, our wireless Bluetooth version of our very popular Circuit Playground. Express. In case you're wondering what the range is, it's at least 40 feet. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a it's across Washington Square Park. It's and then I ran out of park. <laughs> we ran out of park. Yeah. And then this weekend, Katni is uh, keynoting at uh, Pi Ohio. Ohio. So check that out. That's coming up this Saturday. And as always, um, if you're interested in learning Circuit Python, Code Academy still has the Circuit Python course. That is the Python on Hardware News this week. Blinka, blinka, Ooh. blinka. All right. So uh, some open source hardware news. Um, actually, before we get into that, um, so we've been doing a similar thing with Python and microcontrollers as we did with machine learning. So we're like, right yeah. now, it's all about ease of use and making it as, as easy as possible. And then we did a um, newsletter. Now CircuitPython's been around, so it's, it's similar. It's like, how do we get how do we get that first five minutes yeah. where you, you just plug in a, a device, it shows up as a drive, and you're just editing a Python file and something happens. There's no yeah, compiling. You, you get that delay of yeah. like, oh wow, this actually also, works. Also, your yeah. toolchain lives on the chip, so there's never any toolchain mismatches. Because yes. it's like, it's a completely enclosed like biosphere of code, which is <laughs> which is kind of nice because it's like you never, you know, even Python, it's like it's really hard to get working on desktops or first type. Oh, yeah. Um, especially if your um, OS like kindly comes with Python two already, and then getting it out, and then putting in Python three. Yeah. So this is a really neat way for people to learn Python, which which I actually think is easier than on the desktop because it's just fixed. It's yeah. fixed in, in in the device. So that was the idea, like. Let's take all the things that we heard people really like about CircuitPython and how can we make that work out well in like an Arduino environment. So it's like, well, let's have it show up as a drive. Let's have files, like a real yeah. file system. And um, so CircuitPython is, is going in all different places, even when it's, it's not even CircuitPython yet, but we'll get there. <laughs> the um, philosophy. All right, so before we get into the guides, um, one announcement, if you happen to be in New York City, um, Adafruit's going to be at the Game Devs of Color Expo, and we're going to have some giveaways. We're sending stuff over to the team there, so do check that out. We're a sponsor, so that'll happen this Saturday in Harlem. Um, and our open source boards that we have, that um, the, including the Pi Badge, will be there. So you could run machine learning stuff and do video games yeah. if you want. Yeah, one of our ideas, Pete, for a video game is when you're a your little character and you, you have to turn yourself into a dog, a cat, or a bird <laughs> because we have those models now. So like the dog will bark or carry something, the cat can climb yeah. up, and the, the, the bird can fly. And you have, to, you have to say it into the device to continue on to the video game. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. OK. Right. Next we, up. We have 1,933 learning guides. That's right. <laughs> Making our way towards 2,000 yeah. right. free What's learning on the big guides. Board this week? Okay, this week we've got some really great guides came out this week. Um, we have top left how to add a new board to the circuitpython.org website. Uh, it's really easy, but you just want a step-by-step -step guide on how to get those images in the right sizing and the, and the YAML file in the right YAML. Um, this guide will take you step-by-step -step on how to do that. Um, this guide assumes that you've followed the previous guide on how to add a board to CircuitPython. You can see below from Catney, it's actually two, exactly two layers below. Um, so follow that guide first. And then you can add it to the circuitpython.org website, which will make it really easy for people to find your board, uh, learn about it, purchase it, and then install CircuitPython on it. Uh, we've got this week's 3D Hangouts project, the Pi Badge case with Flip Out Mike. We'll show that video soon. Yeah. We've got from uh, Miguel uh, uh, Grimberg. Um, he went to PyCon. How do I know? Because he has one of the special edition red Circuit Playground Expresses that were only given away at PyCon 2019 this year. Um, and he made a circuit, a Python a project called Simon Game Clone. So it's basically like Simon, where it uh, lights up red, orange, green, and blue, and has tones, and you have to uh, follow the memory game. Um, but he actually goes through not only, the, he not only shows you how to build the project, but how he built the project 
like how we actually went through the code. So step by step, you're going to learn how do you address arrays and how do you use um, slices to um, talk to three LEDs at a time, for example, or how do you make tones? And then how do you make the logic of the game? How do you um, create longer and longer random numbers that will be the Simon game, you know, the, the red, orange, green, and blue? And then how do you store them in memory and then access them later? So if you're wondering how game logic works and you're a beginner programmer, this is a really good guy because he really takes you through step by step the thinking process of writing a game, not just here's the code and you know this is how you play it. So it's a, a really wonderful guide. Um, not every guide gets to have the, the in-depth um, treatment that he did, so this is a, a great guide. Um, from Brent, we have MQTT and CircuitPython. Last week we released a mini MQTT library. That's actually a pretty full-featured MQTT library, and it's a subset of Paho. So if you use Paho, on Linux before with Python, uh, you'll find them very familiar. It has callback systems and, and looping constructs for MQTT. Um, we have a REST library already, but if you're using some cloud providers, especially Adafruit.io, you'll get um, much better latency with MQTT, uh, of course, a lot less data transfer, and uh, some services only have MQTT, so check this out. You can, uh, he also shows how to set up on a Mosquito server on a private a Raspberry Pi or similar Linux computer. So if you want to run an MQTT server broker on your own, um, he goes through that a little bit and then shows how to connect to it and authenticate. So a really uh, in-depth, high-quality MQTT library for CircuitPython is the best. Um, to figure the guide for me, this uh, Monday I wrote the TensorFlow Light for Microcontrollers kit quick start, which is basically what you saw. How to put together the kit, how to load the code, and how to get started um, with dragging and dropping TensorFlow Light models onto your board. Um, to test them out, and I provide three or four different modules models for you to try out with your microphone. And more coming soon, as soon as uh, he finishes some issues. <laughs> Get on that already! What are you doing here? Why aren't you closing I'm issues shocking, right now? Yeah. I know. I just... uh, sorry. Uh, and then we have the sound activated shark mask. This is awesome. This is um, it's in Make Code with Circuit Python, and the microphone <laughs> detects when you speak. It's not machine learning. It's just looking for the audio. Yeah. But then um, the servo connected to the circuit playground moves the shark mask up and down. Perfect timing, because you know what next week is? It's an American holiday. Shark, shark week. week. Yes. <laughs> and actually, here, here's the thing. We, we can make promises, and we keep them. Also, they're on video. So one thing we, we want, so we have this poster. It says, uh, make robot friend, not robot enemy. So here's one thing we wouldn't do. We wouldn't do a machine learning project that's like a shark biting or eating someone. Because like, no. there's, there's already there's already enough baggage. Yes. Like our science fiction authors have all said like, okay, yes. whatever code you write, it's probably gonna meet you one day and you better be nice to it. Yeah. So like, we listen to that. We're like, okay, like make robot friend, not robot enemy. <laughs> We have all these puppets, and we. We're, it's we're, a very we, nice shark. But, but that's one. That, that's one thing that that so far I really like what's been going on in the machine learning, uh, from microcontrollers world. Yes. Because it's just been a lot of like, oh cool, like here's a neat demo, and it's speech recognition, and it's like image recognition. The, the, the things that people worry about with AI. Have, hasn't hit there yet, and I think it's yeah. nice because it, it's a little tiny thing. So that's yeah. one, that's our promise. We won't do anything terrible. Yeah. So yay! Yeah. I don't know if you can get folks to agree to something at like a tiny no, no, ML I, summit. Like I, I think I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think like, that's you know that's definitely what what we're interested in. It's yeah. Like, like make make robot friends. Yeah. And you can we can send out posters, but that we won't. That's why. Lamar said, "This is this has nothing to do with machine learning. Yeah, that's just that's just make code and a, a servo. Well, just because it's it's speech recognition. Yeah. It's not speech recognition. It's just speech yeah. sound you, recognition. You, it's sound recognition. But it works quite well. So you, yeah. you can go R or you can actually say anything you want. It'll yeah. link up. Uh, we yes, have a yeah. really nice guide from Kevin Walters on how to make." Uh, beautiful images on an oscilloscope. If you have one of these old, or even modern oscilloscopes can do this, but the raster ones look really cool. Um, you can use CircuitPython and play very custom-made audio files that use the analog DACs on our boards to make, uh, in this case, it's a, it's a two DAC board because it can do X and Y. The previous one was only um, one DAC, so you could only do like a sweeping image. Um, but you can do um, illustrations or images and then um, you make custom animations that display, and it teaches you a little bit also about vector art and uh, lunar lander games and, and old video games that use this technique for drawing. And finally, we have the e-paper maze maker from Dan C. He was on Show and Tell if you want to see him chat about it. Um, but d uh, displaying a custom, uh, unique maze each time on an e-paper display, and then when you press a button, it'll show you the solution as well. 
Okay, and then uh, I was going to just play like a couple seconds of this Simon game so folks can see it. All right, some more guides coming up next Beep, week. Beep, boop. All right, Main New York City, we're going to show a little bit of factory footage. Here is the Adafruit factory doing its thing. And it wouldn't be a factory footage recap without a sunrise or sunset. We set up a camera outside the window from where the picking places are. And this is what they wake up to or fall asleep to <laughs> every single day. So good old time lapse. Okay, we have um, two quick 3D printing bids that we're going to show. The first one is um, the flip out case. And then the next one is a speed up. So we're going to do one after the other. Yep. All right. Hey, folks. We're testing out the 3D printed case with a flip out microphone. And I have here loaded Lady Ada's TensorFlow Lite demo. Let's try it out. Yes. Yes. No. Yes, 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 yes. 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 It also works when you have it plugged in like that. Yes. Yes. No. no. Cool. So we'll release this uh, in a couple days. Still working on the guide.
Okay, and don't forget, Noah and Pedro have their show every single Wednesday. You can learn how to make all those things and more. It must be close to new product time because uh, we're switching desks here. That's right. Uh, I am happy. Can okay, you tell the difference? Before we do that, um, the code is TinyML. This will go on until midnight or when I remember to turn the code off. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's either midnight or like maybe a little bit later. And it supports us, an open source hardware company here in New York City. We have um, 401ks and snacks and paid days off for charity and all that stuff. And we're making good robot friends, not robot enemies. So that's where your, your dollars go to. Um, lady, are you ready? Yep. All right, let's, uh, let's do this. New, 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 new products time. Okay. Okay. First up. First up, we have an updated product. So it's updated enough, I put it in the new product video. Um, we've had these battery packs for a while. They're great for powering your single board lens <coughs> computers. You can recharge them. They provide a good two amp output, which is needed for Raspberry Pi computers and such. Um, and uh, you can charge them up. And this one has been updated to now be 5,000 milliamp hours instead of 4,000. Also has this handy button on the side that when you press it, it'll uh, light up the four LEDs to tell you the battery life. So Do you want case, me to go to the four. overhead for that? Yeah, I can just show it off real fast. But um, yeah, so it's got this thing. You can see it's now three quarters of the way charge. You charge it over micro USB. You have USB two amp out. And I think if you hold the button down, this turns into a flashlight. Yeah, you can, I don't right. know, not so useful. But uh, it's really great for powering um, Linux computers. Not great for microcontrollers because if you have a low enough draw, it'll automatically turn off. So much better for high draw devices. Okay. What's next? Next up, we all have another updated product, but again, it's fairly updated-ish enough that I wanted to point it out. Um, there's 1.5 inch TFT display. This is, a, this is not a composite image. That's actually a photo wow. of what the TFT looks like, which yeah. is pretty good for a low cost TFT display. Um, showing Adabot and I'll have that demo running. And I've got it just running on a Metro. Over? Yeah. Let me see, I think it goes this way around. Uh, so we've updated this to be, uh, it's still 1.54 inch, it's still 240 by 240 IPS display. So it looks great and it has great angle visibility as well. Um, we added a TE pin, so a lot of people wanted the Terra Enable output. Um, there is now a pin you can access for the TE output. Uh, it's the same chipset and size as before. Um, however, the, the screen, we did have to move the holes a little bit um, to make room for this slightly different size screen. So the physical shape has changed, uh, but the code is identical. So you can use this wherever you'd like with your ST7789, works with our GFX library and in CircuitPython as well. Okay. Next up, we have Ada boxes in stock. Uh, we just, a few months ago, shipped our Ada box uh, 12, which was Pygamer. Um, which is an all-in-one gaming platform you can use with MakeCode Arcade. You can also write code in Arduino. We have an NES emulator that we ported, you can see here. Um, you also runs all our machine learning demos. Yes. Runs our machine learning this, demo. Well, we wanted to make sure like it, there's a game device that can do, because like that's a natural interface for so many people. So yeah. People know, he's like, oh, a joystick and two buttons. Yeah, they know, they, they know what they it know means. They know right away what to do with it. Um, and so this, uh, this Adabox is chock full of goodies that would let you take advantage of this cool gaming platform that we designed. Um, includes a, a, a grid of gridded paper notebook that um, is wire bound and some markers. You can uh, draw out your sprites and, um, for all the pixel art you're going to do. Uh, a case, a storage kit, button, uh, battery, and speaker, so you can put together your Pi Gamer. And uh, we have always some left over after the initial run, um, and so we have some in stock if you would like to pick up an Adabox uh, because you really liked it or because you didn't get to have one. Um, but once we sell through the Adaboxes, we don't make any more, so pick one up if you would like to get the full kit. We have um, another slide pot. Uh, people like slide pots, and here's another one. This one is short, it's only 45 millimeters long. Um, it's got a rubber nub on it, sorry, a plastic nub on it, which I really like. A lot of uh, potentiometers don't come with a knob. They have just like the bare slider, which is kind of like, not painful to use, but it's uncomfortable. Um, but this one has a nice um, plastic bit that you can grab. And um, one thing that isn't clear from the video, but I can show on the overhead, is it has this little um, notch here and that just gives you a slight center indent so oh, when you nice. when you hit the center 
this it's just a little bit of um, metal just gets uh, I like the volume knobs where indented. it's in the middle it, yeah. it snaps to the middle I kind of like so that this there. is good for if you want to know where the center is and that's kind of nice I mean you can of course gauge from looking at it yeah. where the center is but it does give you um, I, it, I do like it it's I like that like you chose that one because there's a bunch that don't do that and it costs nothing extra to do that it does cost nothing <laughs> extra to do it's to actually do. the absence of co it's, it's empty it's, yeah it's, but yeah, it doesn't make notch. it hard to like you can move it smoothly you just you just can feel it yeah. very lightly there's that's a little cool. bit of a bump it's a linear 10k so that's very handy um you know you can kind of like shove it into a breadboard if you want to use it with a breadboard um it's not breadboard friendly but it does work in one if you really want to um of course you'd want like a two breadboards side to side so you could have it that way or perf board works best of course um but it's simple effective and yeah it's got all the niceties it's got the middle indent and it's got this nice rubber uh, plastic knob. I see. I keep saying rubber because it looks rubber, but it's plastic. Okay. Slidey, what, are, slidey. What, what is this? I saw this go into the store. Yeah. So this is actually a. It's a two-parter, and we're gonna also have a kit. Um, yeah. For everything soon. Want to show both? Um, or how do you want to? So do this? yeah, let's just go to the the next one. So okay. it's a add-on for the Raspberry Pi computer, Raspberry Pi three, and it's a rack, R A K wireless. LoRa concentrator hat. So basically, we have a LoRa bonnet that works very well with a Raspberry Pi that lets you do one channel of LoRa communication. LoRa is a, a multi-kilometer range wireless radio protocol that doesn't have Wi-Fi. It's not like Wi-Fi or cellular. You don't have to pay to use it, um, but it's not super high bandwidth, and it's kind of very bare bones. You just sort of send packets back and forth. But the good news is it's great for sensor nodes. If you have a, like you know, a couple dozen or even a hundred um, small, low cost, low power wireless sensor nodes, LoRa is a great protocol to use because unless, uh, unlike cellular, you don't have to pay a, um, uh, a monthly fee and unlike, unlike Wi-Fi, it goes many kilometers. So I'll show the, the hat on the overhead since it's quite a thing. So um, this is the hat, and you see it's actually a module. This is the wireless module soldered onto this adapter, and it also includes a GPS uh, from uBlock, so it's kind of nice. A lot of um, lower radio gateways, if you have GPS, it'll, it'll show it up on a map and also tell you when it's active, so it's kind of cool. And then uBlock's up and comer. Like, they've been, they've been doing a lot of stuff lately. I've been, seeing their, I've been seeing their stuff everywhere. Stuff everywhere. Yeah. And then, you know, you plug this onto a um, Raspberry Pi. It, right now it works with the Raspberry Pi 3. I think they're probably working on Pi 4 support, but since it just came out, it's kind of new. And then you have two antennas, LoRa, and you get with this, it actually comes with antennas and adapter, so you have a LoRa and GPS to connect that up, and it's an eight-channel transceiver. So unlike the low-cost one channel, this can connect to any channel of LoRa. So this is great if you're making a router because you can um, connect to hundreds of nodes, any, and use channel hopping so that they don't interfere with each other. You can connect on any channel. You don't have to do anything special customization, and then it works with the Things Network. So we have a Things Network router, but if you want to build one on a Raspberry Pi for some reason, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to have more control over your setup, or you just have a Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have the case, and we have the add-on kit. You probably want both because then you, know, you get a Raspberry Pi, plug this on, and then you want to put this in the case. Um, the case is quite good looking and very durable. And again, it only fits the Pi 3s and Pi 2s, and it has all the holes and slots that you might need for attaching antennas and such, which is, which is quite nice. And then it comes with the top and bottom, which I've removed to make it easy to see the case. So two products, but they go together like peanut butter and jelly. Okay. <laughs> then uh, we got another screen. Yes, one more screen. So many screens. So this is a new screen. So if you like that 1.54 inch screen and you're like, but what if I wanted a smaller one? This is a 1.3 inch 240 by 240 display, also IPS. It's so tiny. And um, I love the screen. You know what's funny? They're, you can get these screens online from like eBay and stuff, but um, they actually are like set up wrong on most breakouts. Um, whereas we've kind of done breakouts a lot, so we know how to set it up. So not only is it level shifted, but you get, um, so am I off by one? Oh, no, I have the SD card missing. That's why it's, it's like, where's the SD card? Hold on, I gotta make sure I don't pull the SD card out and have it fly over. So when there's no SD card, you get you get static. Well, it's like it's like TV static, but yeah. not, it's not TV static. Well, hopefully, 
for this voice. Now there's a whole generation of people that'll never see TV static. No, they yeah. have fake static. You know, they, yeah. they, they, it's like a loop. Okay, so if you have the screen on, so yeah, it's playing the same um, beautiful images that we had on the 1.54 inch display, but now it's a teeny cute little display. Yeah, that's so it's so small, very high resolution, um, but uh, looks great. This is used in smartwatches a lot. And again, it's set up nicely and correctly so you can use proper SPI. And then um, we didn't have enough space for the TE pin here. But again, if you are one of those people who's like, I want TE pin, uh, it's broken out there. And then we have SD card slots on this and this, so you can easily access your data. And um, you have a nice connector and level shifting so you can use this with three volt or five volt logic, however you wish. So same chip, same resolution, different sizes. Big sister, little sister, hi. Okay. Friends. And the star of the show tonight besides our community, Pete, and more is Gizmo. That's right. Gizmo. It's our it, first Gizmo. Yeah. You wanted what a name this for be? what are what do we call things that plug into circuit playgrounds? Gizmos. So we got the yeah. <laughs> we don't know why it came with this name, but we did. So um, this is a solderless add-on for the circuit playground express. You can even use it with the Bluetooth one coming out. And it's got these pre-soldered standoffs that are M3 compatible. So you just need some M3 screws that you can find at any hardware store and um, you can bolt it on. You can even uh, screw through, like the, the threads go all the way through. So if you wanted to keep this going up and then maybe connect something else to it, you could do that too. Uh, but here I have an example of, you know, let's say you want to connect your barometric pressure or humidity sensor. Maybe you want to connect one of these little OLEDs or TFT displays, whatever you like. You have a little prototyping area. Let me grab one that is on a second so I can show the bottom. So the bottom has your standard preferred design. And oh, these are little protectors. When you pick and place them, they come with these protectors that you then have to just peel off. They just come right off. I know it's just like around from a proto, but this is my favorite new product. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's just cute. I'm just like, I don't It's I just, cute. I just yeah, it's got the silk screen. It's got the red and blue. So this is a three volt line and the, yeah. the ground line. And then it's got the, um, the breadboard, uh, you know, ish design yeah. here. And then there's a couple like freestanding holes. I figured if you had a weird connector or something. It's a round breadboard for like circuit playgrounds. And then, that's, yeah, you got the A, right all the pins are broken out and then it tells you how to connect it. And then, um, yeah, you just use screws. So in this case, it's just I squared C. So I was lazy, I only put in four screws, but it's solid. I mean, it's a mechanical as well as electrical connection, but it's solid. So if you wanted to use this, I mean, heck, you could put an SD card slot on here and have it do SD card and data Dave logging. Dave did biscuits. He called them biscuits a long time ago. He did. Ago. <laughs> and biscuit. This is yeah. kind of a biscuit. It's hard for me not to say biscuit, but I know. we did. We had been mm, coming biscuits. up with this know, kind of thing for a bit. Biscuits. Yeah, now I'm on biscuits. <laughs> but we thought gizmo. I think because it was like a, it was like a little play thing. Yeah, we thought they looked like gizmos. Like, oh, look at these cute little it's gizmos. It's a little gizmo you would yeah. So we'll have other gizmos coming soon. But this is the first one. It's a proto gizmo. I think it will be yeah. very helpful for people who want to add more circuitry can do a little bit of soldering and they want it to be permanently or semi-permanently attached. So you can unscrew it and uh, recycle it for later. But nice and nice and durable. These are really cool pick and place um, standoffs too. These are super neat. They just pick and yeah. place on, reflow them and like you can't get these off. These are like super permanent. Yeah. These are like the strongest good. thing in the world. <laughs> this is like the teeth destroying gizmo biscuit. <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's the new products. Right, and that's the new products. All right, you want to do a recap? Yep. All right. On tonight's new products. Okay. New, 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 new. All right, we got an update to this 4,000 milliamp hour battery pack. It's now 5,000 milliamp hours. Great for your single board computers. Gives you up to two amps output of USB. New rechargeable. We've got update to the 1.5 inch 240 by 240 IPS display. Same chipset, same resolution. Uh, slightly different size of the PCB, slightly different display, which we thought was more durable. Uh, I think it's a higher quality display. And now has the TE pin broken out for when you want to do tear enable detection. Adabox uh, 12. Pick one up if you somehow missed or you want another Adabox 12. This one was Pi Gamer themed. You get the Pi Gamer kit and all these goodies as well. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to get ready for uh, Adabox 13, which is coming up real soon, sooner than you expect. And it's going to be lucky number 13. Next up, we have a, a miniature, only 45 millimeter long, 10K linear potentiometer with like a set center indent, great slide pot, comes with a plastic knob even. 
The uh, Rack Laura Raspberry Pi hat and enclosure lets you turn any Raspberry Pi 3 computer into an eight channel Laura concentrator slash transceiver and even has a GPS built in as well. You get SD card, so it's plug and play. It's super easy to use to make your own Laura gateway using a Raspberry Pi computer. Another screen. We have um, a new product, a 1.3 inch 240 by 240 display, also IPS, just like that 1.54 inch, but even smaller and cuter. Um, also the ST7789, lovely little display. Uh, these displays are used in smartwatches. And finally, they're coming out with proper SPI uh, interfaces, not just MIPI, so that's cool. And we've got the first of many gizmos, the Proto Gizmo, which bolts onto the back of a Circuit Playground Express and lets you add a perma-proto prototyping area. So great if you want to add other circuitry that doesn't come on the Circuit Playground Express, maybe displays, sensors, actuators, whatever you like, uh, you can solder to the back and then bolt it on. No soldering is required to attach it, so it's a semi-permanent um, connection, but of course you solder to the proto. That was me. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. At the very end of the show, I'm gonna I'll show two last videos while yeah. we're packing up. Yeah. But what we'll continue to do is top secret. Ah. So we have top secret. Here we go. Because we have a, this top secret is going to be a, it's going to be neat. We're going to show a couple things that we're working on, and then I'm going to ask Pete and Lamore to come up with what they what's the dream machine learning board. Um, so top secret this week, uh, we're working on these. What are these, little dude? These are little quick compatible boards that add crypto security chips to your microcontroller wireless device. You can tell because there's a lock on it. There's a lock. That means it's yeah. secure, guys. So, so the ATECC608 yeah. and also the Trust MCX, there's two series from Infineon. There's a lot of companies coming out with uh, secure element chips, which is really good news because it means people are finally learning the lesson of don't pretend like your microcontroller is secure. It's not. So just put all your stuff here, and then at least you have someone to sue when it gets cracked. Yeah, and we'll have a whole big guide because there's Grove, there's Quick, there's Stemma, and Stemma QT. We made something that's compatible with all of them, Stemma. So we'll have a whole, like, here's what works with what, um, but these are just some of them. And then uh, you're also working on a Stemma OLED. Yep, I've got, uh, I'm going to try to design like one a week. So uh, I wanted to update our classic 128 by 32 monochrome OLED. And since I was redesigning it, um, I was, you know, I wanted to clean up the schematic a little bit, add an auto reset circuit because that comes up a lot. And then again, I, I threw on this quick compatible connector and uh, indicator LED on the back. So I think we'll revise that OLED display and make it even better. And now it's plug and play. Okay. And the next part of Top Secret, I'm excited about this. So this is the name of our machine learning board. It's, it's going to be called BrainCraft. BrainCraft. Yes. Because it's craft and it's like it's brains. And like, so we're yes. like, okay, so here, here's the idea. It's better um, than the yes, no machine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're inside of this oh, machine yeah, learning brain. We're so, oh. Yeah, here we are. Hey, look at us. Um, so this might be the shape of the board, but um, Lamar, you have a piece of paper here. Yeah. So um, this is where I write the. So, so Pete, you, you you can wave a magic wand, and there's this this MIT engineer sitting here. Yes. What do so you, I'm wearing a MIT what, shirt. What do you want? What <laughs> this do you, is a light shirt. What do you want on a machine learning board? What, For what, what microcontrollers. You, so loads of sensors. Lots, loads, loads of sensors. Of sen loads oh, wait, hold on. I'm taking this. So loads, loads of sensors. Of sensors. Could they be connected via little, you know, these these type of cables? Like you just which, put whatever which, ones you want. Yeah. Could they be or should they be okay. attached? And which ones are the most important? You think? So, um, I think having image sensors. Image sensors. So like it's really useful. So okay. that's like a camera. Yeah, like a camera. Okay. Like yeah, a yeah, Panasonic so grid eye. We call could those like, cameras. It could, yeah. be, it could be a heat sensitive camera. Yeah, well that's okay. that's what I'm thinking. And camera okay. and you know, one of the reasons we talk about image sensors is because hey yeah, you think about them as cameras, but then you think about oh I'm taking photos. Yeah. Whereas actually if you've got machine learning you can turn that image sensor into a hey is there a person in front of me sensor. Yes. Yeah. So it sort okay. of becomes. It's this true. It is a camera's image, and I'm not okay. saying you're wrong. I just think. Yeah, it's, no, no. It's, it's, it's funny. It's the way. Okay. Uh, way my okay. What other sensors? All right. What else? What other sensors? Um, so yeah. microphones, microphone. obviously, because yes. we've seen. Do you need two or is one okay? No, one's perfectly one's fine. fine. Microphone. Right. Yes. I'm gonna cross out that S. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, accelerometers. Accelerometer. So that's actually, one of the videos we're gonna show at the end. We have a we found oh, a really cool. good low cost accelerometer. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. What else? So what have you got? 
<laughs> oh, well, have you got what, what would you do? What would you do with an accelerometer? Why is that? Um, so actually, um, there's all sorts of things. So one of the things that's gestures. really cool is yeah, gestures. Okay. Um, also, if you've got like a piece of machinery that's like shaking itself to bits, yeah. yeah, you can actually use machine learning to do like predictive maintenance. Yeah. And spot when things are starting to go wrong, yeah. like when a bearing is starting yeah. to. Yeah. One of the best you know, machine loose. learning projects I saw was someone modified their power saw so right before a kickback. Yeah. You would turn the blade off, ah. and the way they did that was to use it over and over and over to, and that was the training until it yeah. kicked back over and over. So it was speed, and it was the tilt. Ah. And so what happened was eventually they're like, you know what? When I when I, now when I use it, it'll cut it, it'll turn itself off before it kicks back. Yeah, it was yeah. like that's exact. And, and it was just like, why aren't the tool companies doing it? They're just they're not they're not doing electronics and machine learning. Yeah. So okay. Why? Okay. So and I really, one of the things I actually really want to do with microphones is detect screams. Screams. Yeah. So that you could actually just power off oh, that's any machinery. Idea. Any machinery, it's, just yeah. screaming. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good for pranks, but also good for safety. Because yeah. like, someone just screams and just like the thing turns off. That's the scream that you want. Okay, yeah. okay. so there's, there's inputs. The inputs are image sensor camera, microphone sensor. So what about outputs? What kind of outputs so, would you like? Uh, screen and microphone oh sorry screen and speakers screen um, okay so you want screen so like one okay. of those screens that yeah. we just showed maybe yeah that what, would be do awesome. you have big or like is it i don't know no i no, have no idea question mark yeah. Yeah. do you need like a touch screen on it or do you want it just to be a i mean that i am on the machine learning side uh i really see the screen as more just um like giving feedback feedback so, okay, so yeah. like i like the badge project we did where it's like you get to see what it's telling you what's going on yeah or like if things don't work out okay yeah. so it. screen what else uh, outputs so speaker speaker you want okay. it to be able to chat back to you okay if you Got chat that. to it hello yeah. <laughs> goodbye <laughs> yes no okay what um, are the outputs so i think having something like we were talking about you know controlling like um DC re or an AC DC relay or something okay. like that. Relay, so, relay. Yeah, so some kind of you know something where yeah. you can What's actually. What's great is make you know the badge can kind of all do this right now with a feather yeah. connector. So good work, you. Okay. <laughs> all right, so you just have to like make this look like a brain. Yeah. All right. All right. So inputs are image sensor camera, microphone accelerometer, and the output is screen for debugging, a speaker so you can like speak back to you, and like maybe a relay. Yeah, actuator type thing. The other thing that, you know, I don't know as much about this as I'd like to, but yeah. um, have you looked at like NB, like IoT, like sort of narrowband yeah. IoT? Yeah, sort the of low cost data. Low, low cost data Slow on data. like. Yeah. Um, so you want something that you can add, you can plug that in and now it has narrowband. Yeah, yeah, so you can just kind like of like. Aura, like mm, it's never been cellular. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so you don't have to do some like the wireless, setup. wireless flexibility. Yeah, exactly. So you, can, so you can put these up in the world yeah. and they can like, you know, oh, I saw a person but, on the... But keep it yeah. in the low power world. Like it has yeah. to be, it can yeah. sleep and wake up. It's so like 3G, yeah. probably not, but yeah. narrowband yeah. IoT, which is making its way across the country. Yeah. Okay. All right. What else you want? What else? We're probably going to do this. So you're gonna... Oh. Yeah. We're in the uh, brain. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we can't get out of this brain until we have all I can't leave this brain. Until the feature set is finished. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's... Uh, Part of it is, I guess, what we're thinking about for the power budget. Yeah. Because obviously, like, you so know, once power. you get into screen, yeah, because I, you know, one of my big things is I want these to be out in, like, you know, in fields, like helping farmers kind of tell when pests are there so they can, yeah. like, you know, reduce the amount of pesticides they use and, like, you know, yeah, anything yeah, yeah. we can do. So anything we can do around like energy harvesting, like being able to have like a, a so like solar, solar add-on. Yeah. Solar add-on. Yeah. So battery power, maybe yeah. solar capability. The more yeah. we made a really good solar charger, and I, I feel like that might be a way that we can know yeah. like whatever type of garbage power we're getting in, like who cares? Yeah. It just kind of can, like, it's just like, okay, whatever, I got it. Like, yeah. yeah. So something that's, that's okay with taking in not such great power. Yeah. Like sometimes it's solar, sometimes it's on the grid. Okay. Okay. I think that's enough to get started with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Right. Let me out of the brain. Okay. Okay. And Braincraft, brain. I think, I think we're gonna go with that because I think there's too many words that have machine learning, yeah. and tensor in it, and like, yeah, no, no. Too many people don't. are calling. So this is it. Yeah. I worked for a company a long time ago called Braincraft, and and now I have the domain name and the trademark. So. I'm and now you're always wondering what we're gonna do with it. I was, like, I was, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be for like crafting, but then like fi when machine learning stuff came along, I'm like, one day we're gonna have a brain craft. Well, that's because you craft models. You're crafting right? little it's like brains. Model making. Yeah. 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 So okay.
All right, and that is top secret. That's how we do product development now. <laughs> we're just going to invite... He just shoves me in this brain. We're just going to invite Google engineers over and say, what do you want? It's like the end of midsummer, except okay. it's a brain. So we're going to do a quick there. round of questions because okay. we got to get out of here yeah. tonight. Yeah, um, i got to eat. we got to go eat. So, Feed this brain. Yeah, let's uh, go over to Discord. I had a couple questions lined up. Yeah. Um, oh, someone wants two, two mics on the brain craft to detect direction of sounds. That you can do, the thing is, is it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of extra computation to detect direction. And you could plug it into one of the connectors if you're really Yeah, you might okay. want to, I mean, it's, it's, on one hand, it's not expensive okay. to have two microphones, oh. but it's not easy to use them. These are, these are like suggestions. We'll put this in the, in the question and answer. Uh, motor and servo control. Okay. You get that for free with Stemma. You, yeah, with Stemma, we could, you plug it in and okay. add that. A glove that has accelerometers in the fingers. Ooh. Okay, that's nice. Um, and then let's go to regular questions. So first we'll do one for Lamore and then we'll go one for each. Uh, what's the difference between the um, AES on the SAM D51 and on the AES on the encryption chip? Um, the What's crypto the chip, the, the, the thing that they're good at, I mean, yes, they have these little acceler accelerators that can do HMAC and AES and, and SHA um, hashing and, and encryption for you. But what they're really, which is, helps with like SSL and other encryption systems where you have to like quickly calculate stuff. But the thing that they're really valuable for, because again, some of that's already built into chips like the 7051. Again, not all chips do, so the, tw the 21 doesn't, in which cases would be handy, is that you can securely store certificates, like private keys, that are very difficult to extract compared with firmware on chips, which is a lot easier to extract than it probably should be. Okay, Pete, is it possible to use TF Lite on an Android phone and Coral Edge TPU? Yes. Very much so. Oh, okay. You can plug yes. an Edge TPU into an Android phone? Uh, oh, sorry, on the Android. Ah. Uh, so you I was. Plug it in. Yeah, so I haven't seen any way to plug it in through USB. So I was yeah. hearing, can you use TF Lite with the Edge TPU? Which you can. You totally yes. can. Oh, but both are yes, but together, maybe yes. not. Yes. Okay. No. But you probably can run Android on a single board computer. I bet. I then, bet it. I bet it's. Possible. I haven't tried to do that there. I've only yeah. ever tried to use it through like Linux and like a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, like Android people run Android on Raspberry Pis. It is possible. Yes. It's kind of weird, but it's like no, yeah. you can run Android. <laughs> okay. So that might be a way to do it. So multiple stomach connectors were um, asked about. Okay. Um, suggesting feather compatibility for the Braincraft board. Yeah. So you can do all that stuff. Okay. Um, I'm writing this all down. Okay. Uh, TF Lite for Feather M4 Express. Yeah, this is what we've been demoing. Okay. So you can run all their demos on the Feather M4. You just wouldn't get the display and, okay. and buttons. All right, this is uh, for either one of you who wants to take this. What do you think about the RIS-5 open source instruction set? Should we jump on to the, into the adventure and get excited or wait as we continue to grow up? Uh, will all this new chip that has come out, like the Sci-Fi Freedom, uh, Unleashed MCU, or the Kendrite, this we've been looking at, uh, K210 SSE, uh, which is targeted to AI and machine learning. It's very tempting, but at the same time, so recent. So yeah, what it's Sci-5 and the Kendrite. Uh, the Kendrite's AI, it's AI yeah. accelerated. And yeah. I, I would actually also call out, if you look, there's a small company called Green Waves. Yeah. And they have, um, okay. they're based, they're a startup based out in France, and they have a RISC-V um, AI chip that actually has like five RISC-V cores, and they're focused mm. on running, um, like machine learning uh, workload, so we we've worked pretty closely with them. Got it. We're pretty excited by what's happening so you, in the risk five world. Do you think that's a, it, you know good and exciting? Like, do you think for people who are interested in machine learning, are the benefits that you get from the speed ups with the like the Kendrite? Is it uh, worth uh, looking at, or is it is the I, arms I, I good enough? I haven't played with the Kendrite um, enough. I mean, right now, um, like the ARM devices are. Um, the ones that have the support and yeah. you know it's it's definitely if you're looking at getting started i would go for an arm device yeah. you're going to have a much like a raspberry better pi. experience lots of tutorials start off with a raspberry pi and then start to look at something like an m4 if you want to kind of go down into the microcontroller world yeah um if you're interested in kind of you know prototyping hardware like what's really interesting about this five is you can do things like put it on to an fpga and then say, oh, I'm going to run a soft core running RISC-V 
and then do that might your be good network for, acceleration. If you're, if you're like a developer and you're like, I want to actually make a product and I'm probably, you know, what am I going to target as my file? I think that's why people are using the Risk Five. It's not because Risk Five itself is any better than the ARM yeah. chipset, uh, the command set. It's just so easy to load that into an FPGA and then yeah. you plug in, you know, one of these neural net assistive uh, cores that can do the calculations for you so fast because they're just optimized and you can just fuse them together much, much faster than if you were going through the ARM uh, core um, licensing process, yeah. which is going to be, of course, a lot longer than an open source process. Okay, I'm going to combine the last three things all into one. Um, another suggestion, water resistant outdoor cases for BrainCraft. Okay. And then... Um, outdoor brain. Yep. And mm -hmm. then someone wants um, a small matrix IR sensor like GridEye on it. Okay, so we, we just plug it in. That. Yeah. And then the last one was a question, um, which the answer is all of this. What's the hardest part of introducing and producing custom products? The feature set, like you, <laughs> you know, have to, what to say yes and no yeah. to. And, and also, I probably had a device that would say yes and no. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Should I include this? Yes. And, and I'll say when things work out really well, you can do things. So the feather format worked out really well for us, and it allowed us to do machine learning on a board that we didn't sit around and start saying this is going to be a machine learning board. It just happens to be a really good one. So sometimes, if you think about what end user is going to need the most, you get lucky, or maybe it's skill, and you can have something that can grow into lots of different uh, platforms. Like, you know, we use we can use Arduino, we can use Circuit Python, we run TensorFlow Lite on it. You know, there's there's lots of things we can do, but it it is it is hard when you get all this great these great requests it's like what to say what to say no to is usually the hard, yeah. hardest thing I agree what to say yes or no okay let's give away something okay we're going to give away a TensorFlow light kit we're out of stock Ooh. but we, we stashed yeah. one so if you want to follow along build these projects yourself you'll get a Pi badge and a microphone and a battery what are the rules rules are if you've won something before you can't win again only one winner per my lifetime the first person to call the magic radio shack phone that's under the overhead call this number and I'm going to pick it up and say, ahoy, ahoy. I'm going to ask you your name, where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on. Could be machine learning. Could be anything. And yeah. uh, if you can do all those three things, you will win a fabulous new TensorFlow Lite for my controllers plus Pro Express Home Edition <laughs> kit. You will be able to it's a DIY talk this, to this thing all the time. And it'll it'll say yes you. and no. Okay, call the number. You have to convert the letters to yeah. numbers. Also, there's a delay. But there's, there's also a delay because the, the phone has to get activated. Well, oh, oh. Right there. Don't go to the overheads. Yeah. Bring it up. Okay. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello. Hello. Congratulations. You, ma you managed to call a phone number to ask an engineer. Congratulations. What's your name and where you're calling from? My name is Dan. I'm in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Okay, Dan. Um, well, you said South Dakota? Yeah. Okay. Hello, Dan from South Dakota. Well, congratulations. You've managed to call this phone number and answer the two most important questions, which is your identity. You have won a TensorFlow Lite for my controller kit. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. I know. You're such a precious human being. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? I am... Um, several years into building a full-size R2-D2. You're building an R2-D2? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know what could be really good in it? You could put a Raspberry Pi with, like, speech recognition, and then <laughs> it could it could recognize words, and it could, like, <laughs> beep boop back at you. That would be cool. That's part of the plan. That's part of the plan? Okay, awesome. So this awesome. is a machine learning uh, project. Okay, so it's, we're in the theme. So if you want to win your uh, prize, which is the machine learning micro kit, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at adafruit.com, and say, it's Dan from South Dakota, and I've won a product number 4317, 4317. And if you give them that information, they'll send you out this kit, and then you can maybe wear it when you show off your R2-D2 at the next convention, or not. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you so much for calling. Have a wonderful night, Dan. You too. Bye. Okay. All right. Well, that's our show. Stick with us. We're giving you giveaway free stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming by. No, thank you, you for having me. You okay. Fun. Yeah, this is awesome. Thanks for helping us design the next product. <laughs> that was super fun. Yeah. Thanks for building it. Yeah.
All right. All right. And uh, special thanks to our uh, remote team that's out there, everyone in Discord who's been helping out all the great questions and suggestions tonight. Um, let me see who's behind the scenes. Has this been tonight. a great show? Yes. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to show that on the overhead? Yeah. Is this the best show we've ever had? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> All right. It knows it. See, and this is when you make when you make robot friends, they they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll support, support you. you. They'll help you. So don't forget the code is uh, TinyML. Uh, special thanks to uh, everyone again, our, our team, and then to Kara who's behind the scenes. Thanks to Kara. Stuff. And uh, we'll be here next week. We'll see everybody later. And Thanks, everybody. Thank you again, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Okay. Sticking with us. Here is your moment of Zener. And then I'll play those two videos. <laughs> we're cleaning up. cool thing this is a new skull this is the Halloween M4 so last year we did the Halloween M0 but why stop there more skulls more circuit Python this version has a 240 by 240 IPS display so you can see it's the really high res, quality text yeah. yeah it's great and of course it's running circuit Python with display IO it's got four side light LEDs so you can see these neo yeah. pixels here but other than that it's pretty much the same it's got an M4 Eight megabytes of flash, the same speaker and stemma connections, capacitive touch pads, battery power, and uh, we'll have some eyeball code for it. So this is the Halloween M4, coming cool. soon. What is this? Hey, it's real hot out. So I'm writing a driver and learning all about this extremely low-cost sensor, the MSA 301. I found this on LCSC a few months ago. And it's like a 20 cent micro, uh, accelerometer, triple axis with tap detection and free fall. And it's like half the price of the next, you know, highest priced accelerometer. So I thought, you know, let's make a board. And I'm starting to use these JSTSH connectors which SparkFun calls Quick Connects. I've got a slightly you know, more level shifting setup here than Quick Boards, but basically this is a sensor in the middle, and then you can connect to it with wires, which is kind of nice for when you're testing accelerometers. So there you go. And okay. then over in Arduino, I've got the plotter showing it. So I just got this working. All right, so you're moving it up and down here. Yeah, but what's back. neat is that it's just, this is 20 cents. I mean, yeah. that's really cheap. It's accelerometers. A used to be about a dollar a piece, so this means we can put accelerometers in more things because they're so inexpensive now. Okay.